Hey friendly foes, it's Jen here. It's been a while since we did a video, but we are out on location at my friend Corey's house and we're gonna be doing drywall patches. This is something that a lot of you have requested, so we thought we'd take some video while we do it and show you how it's done. Um, so what it is, is do you guys remember these old intercom units in the old houses? What was that from the 80s, 90s, John? Mm -hmm. Something like that? So anyway, yeah, these are not functioning anymore and they're in every bedroom. So Corey asked us to take them out and patch the drywall and then fix the texture. So this is gonna be a little bit of a process but we'll take you along and show you how it's done. Also wanted to add, since this is in the days of COVID-19 and lockdown and Florida's exploding and all that stuff, I wanted to assure you guys we're being very safe. You can see I have a mask right here. Um, we've asked Corey and his wife to be elsewhere in the house. And if they are near us, then we have the masks on. I'm leaving it like this because I don't have to touch it uh, until I need to put it back on again. I take the strap and put it over my head, which is another reason we like these masks. Um, so just assuring you guys we're being safe, I promise, while we're doing the work. As I said, the speaker intercoms were not wired, but just in case, we want to double check any other wires in here to see if there's power running in them. So I've got my tester here, and there is power in here. That's good to know. So we're going to be leaving this alone while we work. So if you see any wires, get a tester, check it out. Okay, so these intercom units had a metal frame. You can see it right here inside the wall. It's floppy on one end, but connected on a stud right here. So we need to get that out. So we're going to have to cut over towards the stud to uh, remove the frame. But in addition to that, we're going to cut a little bit, pretty much the box of paint right here. We're going to cut it so we can give it a nice clean edge. You see how this is all crumbly um, and yeah, just bumpy and not straight. We want to get a nice straight edge to replace the drywall patch. So you might need to do that too. If you've got any kind of like, say a fist went through a wall or something like that and you've got it all crumbled, you want to have some nice straight boxy edges. So in our case, a lot of the work's been done for us because we're just going to use these paint lines, which are nice and straight. Uh, but you probably won't have that. So get a nice metal straight edge. This one's nice and long, just depends on the size of your patch, uh, and a pencil. And you're going to be basically making a square around your hole. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Just a note, you might need a couple of passes with the blade. You don't have to punch all the way through the drywall in the first cut. Don't be afraid to just keep going over it a couple times. I've got a sheet down here. I'm not just throwing it on the floor. <laughs> okay, and this will probably come out in pieces and that's all right. You can see I've got most of it out, but I'm just cleaning up the edge. There's just some paper, some crumbles, things like that. Now, you're probably going to end up gouging the edge a little, as I accidentally did here, getting out a screw. That's okay, because this is all going to get puttied over after the fact. So just try and get your edges of the actual drywall nice and clean. So, why am I ruining the wall? Well, we're going to have drywall tape, and it's going to come out over these edges, and then we're going to blend the texture. So for that, we kind of want the existing texture to go away. We want this to be kind of smooth. So it uh, depends on the type of texture you have, how much scraping you'll need to do. If you've got a heavy knockdown, you're gonna have to scrape a bit more. Uh, this texture isn't too bad. So we're just sort of knocking off most of the bumps, again, just to smooth it out so that once we put the tape and the texture, it'll blend better. To put your drywall in, you need to have something to screw it to. So you can see we do have one stud, but we need something over on this side. And you might not have any studs at all. It might just be a free floating piece of drywall. So what we're gonna do is add some wood. Go ahead and measure your hole. You can see mine's about six and a quarter. And then you're gonna add six inches because you wanna have three inches on both sides just to screw it in. You'll see that in the next step. We went outside and cut our wood. This is a two by two, it's nice and sturdy. Uh, you could use something a little smaller, but this is nice. Uh, and you can see again, we've cut it three inches longer on both sides and marked the three inch. I don't know if you can see my pencil lines there. The reason why I'm doing that is so that when I put it in the wall, I can know where the centered point is. So gonna put it in like this don't drop it and I will slide it down oh my hands in the way for you but you see how you can see my two pencil marks and what we're gonna do is slide it over to the edge of your square and then I'm going to screw right here and right here to secure the wood in place there we go. Now you'll notice that my drywall screw did not go too far in the reason why is we're using a special drill bit Neither of us can remember what it's called. 
Um, it's probably a drywall sinking bit. It makes sure that your screw doesn't go too far into the drywall. <laughs> That's perfect. That's good. We're professionals. <laughs> We're going to measure again just uh, the dimensions of your square. the cool thing about drywall. I just scored that line. Look at that. So cool. Now you just have to cut the paper. What I've done is cut a piece of drywall that is one inch larger all the way around than our actual hole. So you can see the half the big. Uh, the reason we did that is now we're going to cut off the extra one inch from all the sides and then peel it so that we leave the front backing paper hanging over the edge. That doesn't make sense, you'll see me do it in a second. But again, what we're doing is we're gonna cut off the extra one inch on all sides, and we're gonna peel off the drywall, but leave this front backing paper, front backing paper? This front fronting paper <laughs> hanging off, so that that will overlap the edges and help us mud it in. Again, if that's confusing, just hang on. So I've scored, I've snapped, and now we're going to peel. There we go. This is awkward to do. There we go. Okay, so see how I've left this edge of paper all the way? I'm gonna do that on the rest of the edges. There we go. There we go. That's two sides done. It's the moment of truth. Here we go. Right. Yeah, okay. Um, now we do know where the studs are because we know one's on this edge and then the screws help us know where this one is. So that's going to help us when we go to screw in the piece of drywall. Got this all screwed in. Now the reason why we left this paper border all the way around is this is taking the place of drywall mud tape. Uh, if you don't want to bother with the extra edge then you would have to go ahead and put on tape but this saves us a step so we're going to do that. Um, now I've got this all screwed in here and I just wanted to point out that our drywall you can see is sunk in a bit. It's really bad on this side, not nearly as bad on this side. That might happen to you. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why this could happen. What we're banking on is just filling it in with extra drywall mud and texture to level it out. So if you're not completely level, you can see that ours isn't either and it's gonna be okay, I promise. Now we mud. So I'm using some lightweight joint compound basic drywall mud. First thing we're going to do because we did this uh, edging here is I'm going to be applying the mud underneath all of these edges and then smoothing them down and then once I've done that I'm going to fill in the rest with some mud. So let's get to it. I mostly applied with a smaller blade but I'm switching to a much bigger one to do a final smooth so let's see how this looks. Oh, look at that. I've been messing with this for about five minutes, just smoothing it over. This could easily, you know, take a year, but just get to the point where you don't want the square recessed into the wall. If anything, you want it to be built up a little bit. And as you're working, stand like I am and look down the wall, ideally with a light source coming this way, and that'll help you see, you know, how smooth it is. Now, you can see it's not perfect. There's blade marks all over. The edge is still kind of a mess. That's okay, because we're going to let this dry overnight. Tomorrow, we're going to come back, and we're going to wet wipe the wall. We're not going to dry sand, because everyone knows that's messy. Um, we found the best way is to take a wet rag and just wipe down the wall, and that will help smooth this over. And, of course, keep in mind we're going to be texturing after that, which hides a multitude of sins, thank goodness. We're back on day two. This has been drying for 24 hours. Now, you've, I think you remember that I said that the drywall patch was recessed a little bit when we screwed it in. Uh, and you can see that in the mud here. It's The mud too has sunk in just a little bit around the edges. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna wet sand a little bit to just to smooth this out as much as we can. And then we're gonna have to do another coat of mud and just smooth it like we did before, come back tomorrow, wet sand, etc. I'm just adding in this extra step, showing it to you on film because I want you to know this does happen to everybody and it's okay if something goes wrong with your mud, if it sinks a little, if there's a little crack, some imperfection, it's okay. Just add more, let it dry and come back and wet sand. What do I mean by wet sand? Literally, you're gonna have a little bucket of water and we found the best thing you can use for this is a really nubby old washcloth. 
So I don't know if you'll be able to see the texture on this, but this is a super rough washcloth. It's from Walmart, like the cheapest ones you can get. We get them in big packs of 10 or 20. Uh, and these are really nice and abrasive, which is perfect for wet sanding. So again, you're just gonna get it nice and wet. Wring it out, you don't want it dripping, you don't wanna soak the wall. You just want it kind of damp. And then, you're literally, just gonna rub the wall. So you can see that's getting nice and smooth. Um, you can do this as much as you like. Just dunk it when you get a little too grungy on the cloth. And best of all, no dust, because we all know that drywall dust is the worst. It's the hardest part about drywall sanding is the mess it makes. This has no mess. All you need is the rag and the bucket. So we've wet sanded, and actually the recess isn't nearly as bad. Once we got all the um, edges kind of sanded down, actually this isn't too bad, but we are still gonna add a skim coat, because as you can see, the uh, edges of the paper or the tape is still visible. We don't like it being that near the surface. So now that this is nice and smooth, we're just gonna add a really quick, very thin skim coat just to cover those a little bit more, and then we can move on to texture. This patch has been smoothed out, skimmed, wet sanded again, and now it's as smooth as we could possibly get it. So it's time for texture. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen these in the hardware store. These are just spray cans of texture. You wanna first look at your walls and determine if it's orange peel or knockdown. Uh, the walls we're working with today have a very light knockdown, so that's what we got, knockdown texture. Now you're going to, this does get messy, so you're going to want to, you can see we put up some paper on either side, and then we also have a large piece of cardboard that I'm going to be holding up right underneath as I spray. Now you're going to want to practice with this, so you can see we've practiced on the cardboard. Um, don't practice on your walls. The good news is if you do mess up, it does wipe off with a wet cloth, so don't worry too much, but it's nice to practice. But generally what I've found is good is to work in a circular motion and then work your way out because you still wanna blend those edges. So we're gonna give this a whirl. I've got my cardboard in place and you can see that it's kind of nice. This is making me keep my distance because you don't wanna to be too close to the wall. It's gonna get really goopy if you're too close. So stay back a good, what is this about? Two feet? Yeah. Um, and here's my can again. You want to shake and work in a circular motion outward. Hang on, let me get my finger on the trigger. Hopefully we get this in one thing. Okay, that's not too bad. So what you want to do is again do a spiral outward and then sort of assess and if you think it's a little light on the edges, which it often is, you can go back in and do another little sprig. So I think it's a little light here on the right, so I'm just going to add a little bit more there. Now what we're gonna do is, uh, according to the can's instructions, you wait about eight minutes and let this firm up, let it dry a little, and then you're gonna come back with a blade and knock it down, so I'll show you that in a minute. It's been about eight minutes that we've been letting our texture dry, so now comes the fun part. We get to actually knock it down. So you're gonna want a nice big blade like this, and then I've learned the best angle is to keep it nice and low against the wall. You don't wanna come up like this, come down like this, and you're gonna provide even pressure, not too hard, not too light, and you just drag down. And if John wants to come in close, he can show you what's happening here because it looks really cool. Also wipe off your blade each time so you have a fresh blade, nice and clean. Watch this. See how it's knocking it down? That's probably a texture that's looking a lot more familiar to you from your wall versus the splotchiness, which is why this is the fun part. Now then at this point, you're gonna to wanna to look at it and just try and compare as best you can to the rest of your wall. I know it's hard when there's not paint on it, but you wanna have a consistent level of texture to match the areas around it. The same, just see if the, you know, the patches in between the globby bits, technical terms, um, you want those to match. And if you want, what we've done on some of the other patches here is we've gone back and added a little bit more. You can do that, that's fine. You just add a little more um, spray texture, wait another eight minutes, drag again, and it'll kind of build it up. Another fun trick that John discovered is with the gun, which I, or not the gun, the texture, which I don't have in here, you can adjust whether it's fine or heavy. And so we did heavy on this, but then we went back with a little fine on some of them just to make it match the walls a little better. So practice around, play with it, again, on cardboard ideally, and then just do your best. It's painting day, it's the moment of truth. The texture has been drying overnight, so everything's nice and dry. 
and this is when we find out how good or how, how bad of a job we did. Um, now you can use a small roller, like I'm talking like little small, like three or four inches, or you can use a brush. Today we're using a brush just because it's easier for us. Um, and we have luckily the original paint from the house that the uh, homeowners were able to find. So that's great. It's in a giant five gallon bucket at my feet. Um, but there is a little bit of a technique to this. So let me show you how it's done. First, you never want a whole lot of paint on your brush. Never dip it more than about an inch or two. You're gonna start in the middle. You want it nice and heavy in the middle. I'm gonna need more paint. And then the trick to it is we're gonna be feathering it out on the edges. You definitely wanna get all the texture um, coated heavily, but then you wanna go out, and get lighter and lighter and feather it into the rest of the paint. This is gonna help so you don't have that hard line of a sheen. So let's keep going. So you can see I'm kind of cross hatching out and again, just feathering that into the rest of the paint. We've let the paint dry a little bit. And so now we're just kind of looking it over and it's not too bad. It's not perfect, clearly, um, but it's actually not too bad. Now it is a little shiny right now. That's just because the paint takes a couple of days to fully cure. Uh, so if you notice the same thing with yours, don't panic, just give it a couple days and the sheen will kind of knock down. Uh, but overall the texture kind of matches fairly well and I say we did an okay job but I think we did even better on some of the other patches so just for my vanity's sake I'm gonna have John go through and video all the rest so you can see we did a little better on some of the others <laughs> okay we're back home and I just wanted to finish up by saying I hope that was helpful and also to point out that we are not professional drywallers but that is how they do it it's just theirs would probably look a little bit better <laughs> Just that little caveat throwing that in there. But hopefully this helped you understand how you can do it yourself. Um, and that with a little practice, it can look pretty darn good. If you have any questions, then just leave a comment below and we will try and get back to you. Bye guys.